Mr. Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There has been a cover-up regarding the origins of coronavirus. We see it in the Fauci emails. We see it in the G7's call today to renew an inquiry into those origins. We see it in the Biden administration's efforts to squelch investigation into the origins of the coronavirus. And I want to figure out what side the FBI is on. On April 28th, Dr. Li Ming Yan landed at LAX. One of your agents interviewed her at that time. She then traveled to New York. Your agent from Los Angeles followed her to New York and sought an interview on both the 1st of May and the 2nd of May in 2020. The FBI took Dr. Li Ming Yang's phone, on which the doctor showed evidence of WeChat communications between herself and the director of the CDC in Beijing, all the way dating back to December of 2019 regarding the Chinese military's involvement in the development of the virus and specific links to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Director Ray, when did you become aware of your agency's interface with Dr. Yang? When did you review those WeChat messages? Um, I'm not sure that there's much I can say about any specific investigation. I will say that a couple things. One, um, as I think, I think you know and I think the committee knows, I have been very vocal and I intend to continue to be very vocal about the counterintelligence threat which takes a wide variety of forms from the People's Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party. And I think it's one of the most significant threats facing this country. Is Dr. Yan part of that threat? Well, I, I, again, I want to, don't want to speak specifically about any particular investigation. But the second thing I would mention is that... Well, here's, here's why that's important. Yeah. On, on the first thing, Director A, you know, back in, October, or in you know, April and May of 2020, we didn't have six, nearly 600,000 people dead as a result of the coronavirus. On October 14th, 2020, FBI agent Andrew Zittman brought a scientist who was working with the FBI to meet with Dr. Yan in New York on October 14th. They met for nearly six hours. Can you tell us anything about that meeting and what it tells us about the origins of this virus? It is simply unacceptable to sit here a year later and say you're not gonna tell us whether or not there was information about the origins of the virus when it is so central to the safety and health of our fellow Americans. I, I certainly understand the, the point of the question. Again, I, I have to be careful not to discuss specific investigations. Um, I will say that in addition to our investigative work, uh, as I think has been recently publicly stated by uh, the DNI and I think even the President himself, the intelligence community has been looking at this issue. There are differences of view within the intelligence community about the origins of the coronavirus. I totally and so understand forth. all that. I'm, uh, I'm trying to resolve those a, differences. A deeper with dive these questions. on that subject. So, Director, it, it, we are unable to hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable if we throw our hands in the air and say, well, there's differences of opinion. We have to assess whether those differences are similarly rooted in fact. That's why I need the facts from you. Will you provide to this committee? any scientific analysis that the FBI has done regarding Dr. Yan's claims, regarding the messages she provided to you regarding Beijing's knowledge of the origins of this virus, their military's involvement, and even efforts to try to present to the world a fake genome sequence at the beginning of, of these developments. I'm, I'm happy to see what information we can provide. I will have my staff follow up with yours and see what information we can share on you the subject. You get that if, if we don't look at that rooted information, we're unable to ascertain what differences of opinion are correct and incorrect. But it's hard to believe that the FBI didn't believe Dr. Yan was credible or significant because she lands on April 28th. Your agent, Dana Murphy, takes her phone that day. I'm holding the receipt from where you got the phone that had the WeChat messages that had very important information regarding Beijing and the Chinese Communist Party. And it's not every day that an FBI agent flies from Los Angeles to New York to follow a Chinese doctor who is a whistleblower and a fact witness. And even if Dr. Yan's technical analysis of the virus is incorrect, the fact that she showed up saying that she wanted to provide information and tell the truth seems significant today. Now, back when Dr. Yan made these pronouncements regarding the Chinese Communist Party, their military involvement, the leak of this virus from the lab. We had a number of people trying to discredit her. Are you able to ascertain whether or not that effort to discredit Dr. Yan is part of the counterintelligence efforts by the Chinese Communist Party? 
Again, I, I want to be careful both about what information we can provide in general about any kind of ongoing investigation, but also about what in form that information would take, because in some cases you may be touching on things that would be classified, and that might require a different format. So I, I certainly understand why you're asking the questions. Let me commit to you that I will go back with my folks and see what information can be provided and what form it would have to take if we can provide any. That would be very the helpful. Time uh, 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 Mr. The Chairman, may, time I be, may I be recognized? Mr. Deitch. Oh, wait, hold on, Mr. Chairman. You let everybody else go over for a minute. May I be recognized just for unanimous consent request? The gentleman's time has expired, You're not Mr. treating Deitch. everyone equally, Mr. Chairman. You went over by more than the a minute. Mr. Time, Johnson went over by 45 seconds. Gentleman's time has expired, Mr. Deutsch. What? I just want a unanimous consent Thank request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You want a uh, unanimous consent for what? To, to get oh, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Just a UC is all. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the receipt from the United States Department of Justice wherein Dr. Yang's phone was taken by FBI agent Dana Murphy. Without objection, uh, without objection, the gentleman's time has expired. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think, I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today. And I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy uh, massive 
uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.